It's Stefan here to talk to you guys about a new bicycle street project they're putting here in Harlem called Herman Jansvake. And there's a big uh, announcement sign behind me, and I'll break it down for you guys really quick if you guys don't speak Dutch. Hey guys, so that clip you guys just saw was a TikTok clip made way back in the summer when I first encountered this project of Herman Jansvake, which is a local street here in Harlem. It's now winter time, the project's done, and I wanted to share you with you guys what they managed to do and i also just wanted to share with you guys what a typical new project looks like in the netherlands there's this idea out there that the netherlands is a really old country so the streets were always perfect and meant for people but that's just something that's just not true so i just want to show you guys what a brand new street looks like in the netherlands so this is the street herman jansveeg in harlem just to zoom out for you guys this is where Harlem is. It's pretty close to Amsterdam. It's only around a 15 minute train ride. And Herman Jansveeg is your classic example of what we call a Dutch ETW, the Dutch Erf 2 Hungsveeg, or the Neighborhood Access Street. And we know that it's been Erf 2 Hungsveeg mainly because the only function this street is serving right here is to provide access to all of the houses and buildings along right here. The main traffic routes, or meant to move traffic quickly, are going to be on the N200 road here, and then on the Cowdenhorn road, which skirts the canal over here. This street is simply ferrying, Hermjansvik is simply ferrying local traffic coming from this road and this road to the local houses here. This is not meant as a through road between these two roads here. That's a function that's going to be fulfilled by Gedemte so this is what the project looked like before the construction started. So this is the main road meant to shuttle traffic, and this is the beginning of Herman Jansveeg. We got a lot of car parking right here. You got the lovely canal and the windmill over here, classic Harlem. And this is really what your classic Dutch street looked like before they really tried to make a lot of these streets safer. So it's, you know, relatively calm, but you have lots of parked cars. The sidewalks are really narrow because you're bunched up right between the tall buildings and a big row of parked cars. And even on the other side, the sidewalk's not super wide area. This whole space really feels quite narrow and constrained and completely taken over by cars here. So people are still allowed to cycle up and down the middle of this because it's an ETW, so the speed limit's only 30 kilometers an hour. And it goes like this pretty much for the whole way. And you can really feel it underneath the bridge here where this sidewalk becomes extremely skinny. The whole place is still taken over by cars and you have this really <laughs> really old bike lane over here. So you don't really see these in the Netherlands anymore. This is really old design. They don't do painted bike lanes anymore on streets. So this is how you can tell this is a really old street design. And this is how Herman Jansvik looks like before it pops out to the entrance of the N200 road. So you can tell the big difference between what's meant to function as a road here and what's meant to function as a street over here. And this, guys, is what the same Herman Jans fake looks like today. It might be hard to believe, but the street has the exact same width as I showed you in the Google Maps street view. Um, the width doesn't change. It's just that the design has been tweaked. And you guys can just see what a difference some small changes in a street design can make to the overall feel and atmosphere of a street. Even the sidewalk here, it feels wider. Apologies about the split screen of the quality. I'm new to this, but I just wanted to show you guys a side to side comparison of what it looked like before and what it looked like after.
So the design looks drastically different, but how did Harlem actually manage to do it? Let's break it down by the individual components. So the first and biggest thing is how the parking along Hermione Space has changed. So before everything was at street level, but now what they've done is they've moved all the parking to the sidewalk level. So the sidewalk got much, much wider. The sidewalk also got an angled curve. And because of that, cars have to park on the sidewalk and the whole street is more opened up. It also makes it safer for cars to merge and diverge from the driving path because when they're getting ready to go on the street, it's a lot more obvious and uh, more clearly gives priority to the cyclists and the cars that are already on the street path. The parking is also delineated, like you can see here. So every paving stone with a peon, that means one parking spot, and it's marked with the lines. And also every five to 10 parking spaces, they've planted a tree just to make the area not feel completely dominated by cars. And it also makes it easier for pedestrians to cross from one sidewalk to the other sidewalk. We've also put in speed thermophiles here, speed bumps, but they're not so harsh that they're uncomfortable to cycle over. They've also put in the uh, Dutch clinkers or paving stones on the actual street surface. So before there used to be asphalt and you guys can just see what a difference it makes in making an area feel more open, inviting, and just prettier than ugly asphalt. They've also drastically improved the area under the tunnel. So this used to be really skinny. Uh, so again, we have another speed thermal on the bottom and we have at least a one and a half meter sidewalk on either side. Last thing, unfortunately, it's probably the one thing I'm not a big fan of on the project. There's not as much cycle parking as you would hope there would be. They mainly kept most of the car parking, but they haven't removed any extra cycle parking. So probably the one thing that could be improved. And the sidewalks too have been widened a bit as well. So it's just way more comfortable to use this um, compared to as it was earlier. And that pretty much makes up all of the individual components for this project. I just like to share a couple of clips with you guys now, just so you can get a feel of what the street feels like for a pedestrian.